Hey, it's Woody, co-host of The Pit on 93X. We're on every Saturday from 10 to midnight, and we were the first to play Invisible Hand on the radio. Just saying. I also host a podcast about Deftones called Change in the House of Pods, where you can hear previous conversations I've had with my guests today. Of course, I'm talking about Chino Moreno and Sean Lopez of Crosses. Ahead of the release of their new album, Good Night, God Bless, I Love You, Delete, you're going to hear a few short stories about the making of the album, Chino's favorite song, and whether or not Sean thinks Chino can still rap. You're also going to hear me gush over the record because it's absolutely stunning. I hope it's not too distracting. Without further ado, here's my conversation with Sean and Chino. I recognize his voice. I know. I'm like, I know this fool. Damn. What's going on, guys? <laughs> What's up, man? How are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you for taking the time to speak with me today. First and foremost, congratulations. You guys made a perfect album. I don't know what else to say other than it's perfect. I don't want to sit here and dick ride for the next 15 minutes, but damn it, I got this thing on Monday night and I've been listening to it nonstop ever since. Congratulations. It is amazing. Dude, appreciate Thank you so that. much, man. Um, I mean, it definitely, it's good to hear that from you too. I mean, I know that, you know, you supported, you know, supported us for a while, you know, I mean, so it's always like, you know, the people who have been on the ride with us, you know, definitely it means a lot to hear that they are on board with it, you know, and, and are loving as much as we are. So like, thank you. I'll, I'll share with you just a couple of my original notes on the album. Just on first listen, uh, such a vibe, no skips, tons of hooks, extremely catchy. Like I was speechless almost through the entire album, except for when. I was singing along with the stuff that I, I felt myself knowing like already. The beats are immaculate. They are perfect. And finally, it's super efficient. Like there is not a single wasted moment on the album. Like I'm not a big fan of long songs. And I think your longest one is like four and a half. Like it, it's 15 long, but it, it just moves. And you never do it. Nothing about the album feels self-indulgent at all. It just... It, it is a total vibe. And and that's why, like, when it's over, when the title track finishes, I'm like, that's perfect. Press play. Had to listen to it again. It's just amazing. Uh, I guess the question I should ask uh, first is about Invisible Hand. Would you talk about why you felt it was the right song to put forward to represent the album? Uh, uh, yeah. I, 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 Go ahead, Sean. I, yeah, I, I, it, it's, it's, it's kind of wild because I feel like with that stuff, at least for me, and I, I think somewhat, you know, is we always, it's nice to just let the label pick one because it's kind of hard to pick, oh, you know, this, this should, this, this is our favorite, or this is like, so I, I th they picked that to lead it off. And I, I was actually pretty surprised because, uh, you know, it's got that insane bass in it. And, you know, I just, I, I, I kept thinking to myself, like, man, I can't believe they're letting us get away with that, you know? Was there something else that you thought that they would pick? I, you know, I, I didn't really think about it much, but I, I just, you know, because it's a, it's kind of an, I don't know, it's not like an, a very conventional song, you know? It's, I mean, I guess it gets your attention, which maybe that's what they were going for. I think it's because it fucking knocks. That's why. I think it's because it slaps so damn hard. Like, there is something about that song that felt to me right away i was like there were a couple of things i noticed wow this is wild like the 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 sounds that are moving from left to right right into, and then when the bass kicks and it cuts so hard it's it's because it knocks this this entire album is not an album that's for like whack speakers this is like an audio experience but i feel like the rest of the album um is is not maybe as uh, uh heavy i guess for lack of a better i mean there's a couple of them as as invisible hand um and that was also very surprising and 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 fun to discover can you talk about um mixing this album and how you managed to to find such um uh, to to reach this how you managed to reach this full like sounds are coming from from below up top left to right it's it's really, like I said, an experience. Can you talk about the mixing and and what you were hoping to achieve with this final sound? 
Yeah, I mean the 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 mixing was actually done um by by my buddy Clint Gibbs, who who's uh you know I've known for known for you know probably ten years or so. Uh, and usually with mixing, I I've done all the mixing of you know I did all the mixing on the, on the first album, and this album was you know. I don't know. I just felt like I was so attached to it and I got it. I, you know, I feel like I got the songs to, you know, probably 75, 80%. And I, you know, and I, I felt like I, that's, that's, I'm too close to it. I, I feel like, I feel like somebody else, you know, can do, can probably take it to 110. And, um, you know, and that's what he did. It's like that it, he didn't, you know, change the, the sound, that you know much but he just brought it to another level and that's you know it, I'm, I'm so glad i let go of that you know because i think it, in the end it, it made it, it it made it so much better it really does transport you like you you very much i feel like are are taken to another place when you listen to this album it's it, it, like i said there's no skips from front to back you just find yourself immersed uh, but the the next track that I do want to ask about is the title track, Good Night, God Bless, I Love You, Delete. And that Art of Noise, Moments in Love type synth that you use. I heard that synth and I literally like melted. And then the oh, rest yeah. of the song unfolds. Did you start with that sound or did that happen later? How did that happen? Um, I feel like that 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 came very soon in, you know, because that that track wise, that's a track that's been done for quite a while it's probably one of the oldest tracks on there and i think um i think chino had mentioned that it took him so long to 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 sing on it because he was he was you know in his his words it was like he was he was afraid to mess it up you know and and you know i i, I relate to that because i know how that is uh even let's say i have a bed of music and i haven't put the drums in yet and let's say it's a better music that I really love. And I haven't done drums yet because part of me is like, man, I, it's got to be right. I don't want to mess it up. But uh, yeah, I mean, we love those those classic sounds like, you know, all that stuff that, that you you hear in these, you know. Yeah, I mean, that's total n uh, nod to to our art of noise. I mean, it's 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 a, and it's actually a, a sound that we've used before. You know, and it's probably a sound we'll use again because it's it just I don't know it just transports you to like a just a, a feeling. It does, and the way that you flipped it, and then the way you Chino sing, good night. It's like oh my god. Do you guys have a favorite hook or something that you find yourself singing along to or singing from the album? Chino, could I start with you? Um. Yeah. I mean, while we're talking about this song, I mean, it's definitely one of them. And the coolest thing about it, I think, was was that, you know, it's basically the very last thing that we recorded, uh, like the very last day in the studio before we wrapped up the sessions for this was was me singing that actual vocal. And uh, again, like, you know, to, to comment on what Sean says, basically, like he, you know, we wait, I waited, even though I, I sequenced the record and I put that song last. And I, I kind of accepted the fact, even if I don't come up with anything vocally for it, it'll just be instrumental and it'll end the record, you know? Um, um, but, you know, the very last, I want to say it was like in a couple hours, I was just like, before I had to leave, I was like, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to just, just loop the song. He looped it for a couple minutes and I wrote down those, those words, which is only really like one sentence or two sentences. And I went in and I sang them, and with that melody, with that good night, like you just sang, good night. Um, and he, Sean was like, "That's all we need. Let's just, let's just, just sing that over and over again." And and I did that, and I feel, kind of just filled up the song singing those two lines. And um, and it, to me, it just really like everything made sense at that point. Like the whole, it really just the whole record made sense at that point. It was like the send off, and kind of what you said earlier too, like in the interview, like how you listen to the record and as soon as it was over you started it over again and i feel like that you know even with the title saying you know good night god bless i love you delete um it just it's like it just like slingshots you right back into starting the record over again um which i've done i've done that I've listened listen to it in that way a few times and um it just really it just like you know it was like the perfect storm when it when it happened and and uh, really really proud of that one it's so great. Yeah, it's, it was it was uh it was like the I think yeah, that was the last night. I think we were on like a five or six day run and at that point I I felt like Chino was knocking 
knocking a song a day out, you know? Wow. And, and it's, it's funny. Cause I'm always, you know, I always have a camera going in here filming, you know, trying to capture pet magic. And, and for some reason, when I was looking at footage of us, like finishing that song, for some reason, the lights were all red in here and they were really low. Like, and it was just, it just, it just, and it just kind of like watching that stuff back when I was looking at it, I was like, man, that, that, that's just, it, it was just, it was a vibe that was going on, man. It was just like one of those moments. I love that. I think that's, uh, that's a wonderful picture. Uh, and the, I want to talk about how prolific you've been, but um, you've, you've sort of touched on that in other conversations. So um, I've just got a couple of more questions uh, that I want to touch on. Grace so pretty what a beautiful song and so subtle that nuance and it's all just there to lift your voice chino uh can you guys just talk about the briefly about the making of that song or or maybe just any sort of words that you have about that song um that's my favorite song in the record right, right now um um the other day i kind of was listening through and that song came on and you know i had my headphones on so obviously it was you know having the experience of like just really being immersed in it. And yeah, that, that song is sort of one of those ones that usually my favorite songs are ones that I feel like they kind of write themselves and, and that one, you know, lyrically just like, it just, I don't remember writing it. It just like, it, it was, it was that kind of vibe where it just sort of like, it just, I don't know how it happened, but it, you know, and, and I remember the day that I actually sang that was kind of crazy because we, uh, this was actually probably a couple of years ago. And that day, I think Sean might have been kind of annoyed because we had like a lot of guests in the studio that day. And usually it's always just pretty much me and him in, in there. But that day it was like, I feel like it was like a Saturday or something like that, or, or maybe a Sunday. And I, um, I, had, I had made plans with a few, you know, other friends and, and ended up just like, like realizing that we had to get work done. So I was like, I'll just invite them to the studio instead. Well, you know, they could just come hang out while you work. And, uh, I, I, I kind of sense that Sean was a little irritated with that, probably mostly because he was like, we got to get this work done. You know what I mean? And, and you know, like, and, you know, when, when you have people there, sometimes it's hard to focus. But for some reason, like, I remember just uh, like going in there and like, usually I'm pretty shy too when I'm in the, in, like singing um, in front of people, like, especially like in the work, when I'm, we're in work mode. And I just didn't, I just felt so confident, I think, just about that song, about the lyrics and everything. And, um, and I remember, just, I remember what, you know, while I was singing it, though, like, like, feeling to myself, like, wow, this is really good, you know, and, mm -hmm. and feeling very proud, of, like accomplished uh, of it. And like I said, it's probably, you know, right now, it's, it's probably one of my favorite tunes on the record, for sure. Mine too. And I think that's amazing because the first thing that I, I think of too is how vulnerable you must have been to uh, sing that in front of other people. That's really cool. Okay. Well, I, I know we've only just got a couple of minutes left, so I, I have to address the rap quote that everybody's running with. Chino, you said you don't think you can rap anymore. And I think that's cap as people who are much younger than me uh, <laughs> say all the time. That is cap. My question <laughs> is for Sean. Sean, can Chino still rap? Oh yeah, I mean, I think I think he could. I mean, I I I always say there's there's so many things that I I don't think people have really heard him do yet that he's I that I think he's still capable of, you know, uh, you know, and I I think crosses in a way like a lot of that, a lot of that comes through and crosses. I think you know, down to like him singing in the lower register when, uh, you know, when we first put out the the beginning of the end and all it, you know, I was laughing at all the comments being like this is great, but who's singing? And I was like, what? Like, really? You know? That's so cool. It, we've trip, talked man. about that before, I think. And and in and, and Grace, you exercise that too. That, I think that's part of the reason why. It's because it you do, you present something new and it's, it is really exciting. The whole album is incredibly exciting. I am uh, thrilled that you guys took the time to speak with me today. Thank you so much. Right on. Appreciate you. Thanks, Woody. All right. Appreciate y'all. Later. Talk All right. Thanks for listening to my chat with Crosses. Again, I'm Woody, co-host of The Pit on 93X, our metal show, and host of Change in the House of Pods, a podcast about Deftones. Check out my podcast and check out other great conversations with all kinds of rock stars on the 93X Interviews podcast.